even when I said to him that I didn't want to do it, that I felt uncomfortable. Um, and not only that, it was extremely painful. He took me back to my car. I went home. I went to the restroom and I was bleeding. And my father confronted me and he said, we're good now. You're normal. And in this relationship, I said, no, I'm never going to change. This is who I am. And you have to accept it. I, I am gay and there's nothing wrong with that. And my father was extremely upset. And he said, I will not have a gay son living in my home. And he said, so either this summer you're going to conversion therapy or you're getting out of my house. I didn't want to disclose it to other family members, feeling as though they were going to feel exactly like my parents felt. Um, and so I did what I knew I had been doing the entire time. I'm going to go back online. I'm going to see if there's someone who could just give me advice on what to do and where to go. And sure enough, I get a message from a guy and his screen name was Jason RMT, registered massage therapist. Um, he says hello to me and he asks me how my day is going. And I told him everything, I told him everything that had been happening to me because I was so vulnerable and I didn't know what to do. And he showed me a tremendous amount of empathy and he told me how he had he was so fortunate enough that he had parents that were so supportive of him and that he knows other people that have gone through similar things and what I've gone through and that he felt in his heart that he needed to help me. So Jason comes from Houston, Houston, Texas, and he told me he was visiting Houston for about a month or two um, for business. I didn't know what the business was. I didn't know what he meant by that. I just knew he was going to take me back to Houston and he said he was staying at a friend's condo um, and that we would be there for a little bit and then we would go to Austin at some point. The first night that I was there with him, he, nothing happened. The next day, um, he said that he had to go and do some business, but that he would be back. He comes back, we go to dinner, everything's normal, everything's fine. And then when it came to bedtime, I showered came out of the shower, got dressed, and then he showered. He comes out of the shower and he's completely and removes his towel and is just naked in front of me. And I kind of gave him a look like, a, like I knew this was coming. I knew you were gonna be just like everyone else. And he says to me, what? We're both men. We both have the same body parts. There's nothing wrong with me being naked in front of you. He says, well, I want to give you a massage. This is what I do on the side for extra money. And he gets on top of me completely nude and begins rubbing me. Um, but again, I'm silent. I don't say anything. He says to me, one day you're going to want to live a life on your own. And one day you're going to want to support yourself. And he said, I know a way. And he said, but there's a problem. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll be a receptionist. I'll answer phones, I'll book appointments. And then he says, the problem is, is that you're not 18. And because you're not 18, you legally cannot be giving massages because you can't get a certificate or a license to provide professional massages. So then I'm like, wait, I don't know how to give a massage. I thought I was gonna be a receptionist. And he says, no, 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 no. He's like, that's the easy part. The easy part is giving the massage. The hard part is just making sure that nobody ever finds out that you're under the age of 18 because you're going to get into a lot of trouble. And then it came time to the very first massage and I'm waiting in a separate room. He's prepping the client in the other room. And then he signals for me to come into the room and I walk into the room. The guy is completely naked, lying face down on a massage table. And at first I kind of thought it was funny. And then the door shut behind me, the doors locked. And then I look at Jason and I remembered he said to me, 
The massage part is the easy part. You just have to do as I do. And immediately Jason then begins to remove his clothing. And I'm looking at him like, what is going on? What is happening? And he says, he just nods his head yes, meaning take your clothes off. And it's in that moment that I knew that this was going to be something way more than what I had signed up for. What am I going to do? I can't go back home. My parents are just fighting with me. My father wants to be out of me. I can't go back to my previous abuser because he's abusing me and he's also abusing other boys. What am I going to do? I, I take off my clothes and I feel completely just embarrassed. Um, and I remember feeling a feeling of feeling cold, like I was shaking and like, man, like, can someone turn up the heat because, <laughs> because I'm really uncomfortable. Um, but it was a shaky feeling that I couldn't control. And we start on the, on the man's legs and then we start moving up to his butt. And I remember trying to not rub his butt and, um, Jason just kind of looked at me like, you, you know, you're supposed to do what I'm doing. And then we move up towards the man's head and he begins touching my inner thigh. And then he begins fondling me. So Jason comes out of the room. He hands me $25. I'm thinking that's like nothing, but it's some, it's more than what I had before. And so then from then on, he begins taking photos of me. He actually had already had a photo from my profile on the dating app and had already used that to find a client, that client, um, which is how he had already been advertising me online. He then asked me to take photos of myself that were shirtless. And he showed me a similar photo to his that was on his massage website, which was him shirtless, just showing his physique um, and telling me that this is how he gets clients. So when the trafficking happened at the age of 16, and then when I got out at the age of 17, it was probably six or seven years after that, um, where I was living in Boston, Massachusetts at that time. This friend says to me and discloses to me that I heard, he says, I heard about what happened to you when you were a teenager. But he says, there's this article that came out about Jason Gandy and he was arrested taking a 15 year old boy to London to do the same thing that he did to you. I can't make my parents change. I can't make my parents go through a healing process if, that, if that's not something that they're looking for.